Hello and welcome to this antenna wireless telemetry tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be expanding some of our knowledge of the functionality of CST by actually parameterizing the variables in our structure. This is unlike what we did with the 2.4 gigahertz patch antenna example where we defined structures by numbers specifically rather than using variables for those numbers. The reason we want to use variables instead is because one, it provides some context for what those values are, and then the second thing is it allows us to be able to use not only the optimizer tool but also the parameter sweep tool to better design our structures and optimize them. So in this tutorial we're going to be doing this very basic coaxial connector. This will be used in a future video to demonstrate how to do an EM thermal coupled simulation. So let's get started. We're going to create a new project. Just as soon as it initializes. Change the dimensions to millimeters, gigahertz, and nanoseconds. So now let's get started with the modeling. We're going to create the inner conductor. And remember, in the 2.4 gigahertz patch, we would have put a number here, but instead we're going to put a variable. These are all zero. The material is copper. now will ask us to define these values. And this is okay. All right, so now we have our structure. We're going to repeat this process for these two other segments by defining two other cylinders you can reference what these dimensions should be by going to help contents tutorials and examples it's running a little bit slow today and then going to tutorials and examples and in this case we're not doing a tutorial we're doing an example and specifically we're doing an example from mps or micro multiphysics studio so if we go here, this is a coupled example, and this is a coaxial connector. And so here we can refer to the dimensions that we'll use. So refer to this. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, define this cylinder structure and this cylinder structure. All right. Hopefully you were successful in creating three separate cylinders using these dimensions that you're given here. So notice that these are three discontinuous structures, and by that I mean they each are individual structures. We want to represent this as one structure. The way that we do this is we go to modeling, we'll select, so control shift, click down, and we're going to add these structures together. And so now they become one continuous structure. So now the next step is going to be doing the same thing that we did where we will now do the dielectric for these three separate segments, if you will, of this conductor. So I'm gonna show you how to define the first one, and then we'll go through and define the next ones on your own. So notice that these materials are not materials that we have in the material library, but we're given some defining characteristics of the materials here. So rather than loading a material from the material library, we're going to define a new material. So let's start with doing our structure. This will be the Teflon dielectric, I believe. Yes. So it's outer radius 
kids. And notice now that the inner radius isn't zero. The inner radius is what we defined. In my case, this is conductor radius one. It will be whatever you named this segment in order to define it. All right, so now we'll come down to material. And rather than loading from the material library like we did with copper, we're gonna define a new material. So this material is Teflon. According to this data, it has an epsilon of 2.08. And the other properties are, it had a delta of, and a thermal conductivity of. So notice that they don't give us in any information about things like the heat capacity. This is all for bioheat things if you were modeling blood flow and they don't give us a density. So my suspicion is, is that this will limit what kind of thermal solver we can use in the coupled EM thermal simulation because usually you have to define a density because a, den a density of zero doesn't make sense. So we'll investigate that in a, in a later video, but for now just make sure that you've defined these properties as they've specified. Oh, and one last thing, we need to define this at a certain frequency. So we're going to do 7.5 gigahertz. And the frequency range, it won't let you enter it in here. If I try to enter things on my keyboard, it won't allow it. And that is because it wants to maintain consistency. And so you do it up here in simulation and frequency. So let's just go ahead and do that now. We're going to do from 0 to 15 gigahertz. All right. And now we've defined our material Teflon. So if we preview it, it will ask us. And it has a radius of 6.65. All right, so we're seeing something that appears to make sense. All right, if we zoom out a little. And now if we look at the cutting plane, we see we've defined this exactly the way that it's asked. So we're gonna do the same thing. Go ahead and define these two dielectric structures on your own using the dimensions, and I'll meet you back here. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you were successful in defining these two dielectrics on your own. A couple pointers. Remember, if you make a mistake, you can come to home and then the history list, and you can delete any mistakes you may have made in order to define the material over again or change your cylinder. This is definitely sort of a nougat option if you've done something horribly wrong. Most likely you won't have to do that. Most likely, you could just, for example, come over here to one of your cylinders, right click, go to properties, define cylinder, and you can pull this back up if you need to change anything. And then if you made any mistakes on the material, you can come down to this materials folder. You can right click and come down to properties. And here this is again in case you made any mistakes. So. Hopefully you were successful, but if you weren't, you can go back and make changes. So let's move on to the next part, which is defining the final outer conductor, this part. And so we're going to do exactly the same thing that we've been doing. We'll define it in three different segments, this one, this one, and this one. And then, oops, let me get rid of this really quickly, tried to define something, I guess. Anyway. You'll define it in three different segments, and then we'll just do a Boolean add to make it one continuous structure. So once again, I'll demonstrate the first one, and then I'll let you do the other two. So modeling, cylinder, escape. I'm going to call this outer conductor, I guess. Outer radius. Hopefully they gave it to us. And 
material is copper. Don't forget to change the material back. So now if we hit, oh, and the inner radius, almost forgot. Let's see, I named mine Teflon radius because that's, that's, that's first segment. If we hit preview, it will ask us. Interestingly, this doesn't give the dimensions of the outer radius. Hmm. All right. And this is an important lesson to learn is that the help contents are not always perfect. So you can see they're showing us the dimensions of this inner conductor and then the dielectrics, but they don't show us what the outer conductor is. And so in that case, what you can do is go to open the actual folder itself. To do that, go to the C drive, go down to the programs folder, and we want the x86 folder. And then scroll down to CST Studio Suite. Examples. This was a multi-physics example. Coupled coaxial connector, and you can open their version of the CST folder to check against. So, if we do that, oops, we'll have to get rid of this for now. I don't want to have to redefine this cylinder again, so I'm just going to give it some value for now, and you can change these values down here. Oop, helps with you. So, come down here, and I guess it was too small, so let's make it 10. That should satisfy it now. Yes. Okay. So for now, that's what we're going to make it. If we come over here, notice they've already been added together. Come down to component. Let's see. Probably this one. All right. Huh. I actually guessed it correctly. That's the other thing. Notice that the outer radius is consistently the same, which makes sense. So for each segment, we'll define the outer radius as 10 and be about our business. Lucky guess. All right. So this is right. We're going to do the same thing for this segment and this segment. And I will meet you back here. Welcome back again. Hopefully you were able to define those three outer conductor structures successfully. And again, notice that we have these discontinuities that we don't want. And so the way that we do that is the same thing that we did with this inner conductor. We'll select the shapes that we want to combine. So in this case, conductor, and then hold down control. Select solid one and solid two. And then go to modeling, Boolean, add. Not sure what's going on with the view there. Hmm. All right, so it didn't add them correctly for some reason. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> so I've added the wrong thing. So this is helpful again. I'm going to show you how to use the history list now. So we want to get rid of these two. So we'll delete. Yes, I do. And then it's important that you update it. All right. So now we're back where we want to be. We have our three discontinuous parts. So we want to combine the outer conductor and solid one and solid two. I accidentally combined the conductor, <laughs> the inner conductor. So let's try this again, Boolean add. And now we have one structure. Excellent. So this completes the modeling portion of this video. See my next video for how we will set up an EM thermal coupled simulation of this structure. Thank you.